Good morning and welcome to Holy Faith Episcopal Church in Inglewood, California. I'm the Reverend Jennifer Wagner Pavia and I thank you for joining me this morning in worship. You will find a link to the worship bulletin below in the comments and on our website at holyfaithinglewood.org. The link can also be found on the Holy Faith Weekly Update. If you would like to receive this, the link to sign up is also below. Buenos dias y bienvenidos a la Iglesia Episcopal Santa Fe en Inglewood, California. Soy la Reverenda Jennifer Wagner Pavia. Les agradezco por acompañarme en la adoración hoy. Encontrará un enlace al boletín de adoración a continuación en los comentarios y en nuestro sitio web en holyfaithinglewood.org. El enlace también se puede encontrar en Holy Faith Weekly Update. Si deseas revisar esto, el enlace para registrarse también se encuentra debajo. Gracias. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in saying the Collect for Purity. Únase a mí para decir la colecta por la pureza. Dios omnipotente, para que en todos los corazones estén manifiestos, todos los deseos conocidos y ningún secreto encubierto. Purifica los pensamientos de nuestros corazones con la inspiración de tu Espíritu Santo, para que te amemos perfectamente y dignamente. Te celebremos la grandeza de tu santo nombre, por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. And also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lectura del libro de Isaías ¿Acaso no lo sabían ustedes? ¿No lo habían oído decir? ¿No se lo contaron, no se lo contaron desde el principio? ¿No lo han comprendido desde la creación del mundo? Dios tiene su trono sobre la bóveda que cubre la tierra y ve a los hombres como si fueran saltamontes. Él extiende el cielo con un, como un toldo, lo despliega como una tienda de campaña. Él convierte en nada a los grandes hombres y hace desaparecer a los jefes de la tierra. Son como plantas tiernas recién plantadas, que apenas han echado raíces en la tierra. 
Si Dios sopla sobre ellos, se marchitan, y el huracán se los lleva como, pa como paja. El Dios Santo pregunta, ¿con quién me van a comparar ustedes? ¿Quién puede ser igual a mí? Levanten los ojos al cielo y miren quién creó todo eso. El que los distribuye uno por uno y a, y a todos los llama por su nombre. Tan grande es su poder y su fuerza que ninguno de ellos falta. Israel, pueblo de Jacob, ¿por qué te quejas? ¿Por qué dices, el Señor no se da cuenta de mi situación? Dios no se interesa por mí. ¿Acaso no lo sabes? ¿No lo has oído? El Señor, el Dios eterno, el Creador del mundo entero, no se fatiga ni se cansa. Su inteligencia es infinita. Él da fuerzas al cansado y al débil lo aumenta de su vigor. Hasta los jóvenes pueden cansarse y fatigarse. Hasta los más fuertes llegan a caer. Pero los que confían en el Señor tendrán siempre nuevas fuerzas y podrán volar como las águilas. Podrán correr sin cansarse y caminar sin fatigarse. Escuchen los que les, lo que el Espíritu está diciendo al pueblo de Dios. Damos gracias a Dios. Aleluya. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exile of Israel. Él sana a los quebrantados de corazón y venda sus heridas. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Grande es el Señor nuestro, incomparable. Su poder, infinita, su sabiduría. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Canten al Señor con acción de gracias. Toquen el arpa a nuestro Dios. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain of the earth. Hace brotar la hierba en los montes y plantas verdes para la humanidad. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. No se deleita en el vigor del caballo, ni se complace en la fortaleza del hombre. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who wait his gracious favor. Reading in the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no grounds for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. 
to those outside the law, I became one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand, and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you, he answered. Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Lectura del Santo Evangelio según San Marcos Gloria a ti, Cristo Señor. Cuando salieron de la sinagoga, Jesús fue con Santiago y Juan a casa de Simón y Andrés. La suegra de Simón estaba en cama, con fiebre. Se lo dijeron a Jesús y él se acercó y tomándola de la mano la levantó. Al momento se le quitó la fiebre y comenzó a atenderlos. Al anochecer, cuando ya se había puesto el sol, Llevaron todos los enfermos y endemoniados a Jesús, y el pueblo entero se reunió a la puerta. Jesús 
sanó de toda clase de enfermedades a mucha gente y expulsó a muchos demonios, pero no dejaba que los demonios hablaran porque ellos lo conocían. De madrugada, cuando todavía estaba oscuro, Jesús se levantó y salió de la ciudad para ir a orar a un lugar solitario. Simón y sus compañeros fueron en busca de Jesús y cuando lo encontraron le dijeron, todos te están buscando. Pero él les contestó, vamos a otros lugares cercanos, también allí debo anunciar el mensaje, porque para esto he salido. Así que Jesús andaba por toda Galilea, anunciando el mensaje en las sinagogas de cada lugar y expulsando a los demonios. Este es el Evangelio de Cristo. Alabanza a ti, Señor Cristo. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Holy faith is my esteemed pleasure to greet you with the love of Jesus all the way from Alexandria, Virginia, and the campus of Virginia Theological Seminary. I have been sent by the Dean and President, Dean Ian Markham, to preach 200 sermons leading up to our 200th anniversary in 2023. So I want to thank you all for opening up your virtual and your physical doors to allow me to share with you today. I'd like to thank Reverend Jennifer for the opportunity to share, and I am very grateful to each of you for tuning in Feel free to share this with your loved ones and friends as you feel led today. Um, you have already heard the readings um, today, but I would like to lift up a couple of verses for thematic emphasis. So out of the book of Isaiah chapter 40, there is a couple of verses I would like to bring to our attention. And it says, he who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength and mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. My way is hidden from the Lord, comma, and my right is disregarded by my God. Question mark. For the time that is ours today, I'd like to share with you briefly from this thought two questions for a questioning age. Two questions for a questioning age. Human inquiry is how we have moved along on this planet. It has been the curiosity of human beings stretching far back beyond what any of us can remember in our lifetime that has propelled us to this point. We find ourselves living a generational relay race in which the best and the worst of what has come before us has now come into our possession. We are now asked to be the recipients and also responsible for the gifts that each generation has passed to us. So as we sit in our homes and as we will soon gather in these churches, we're asking these questions about where do we go? Who shall we be in the times that we are in? What shall our mission be as we live? And how shall we inhabit this earth until the Lord comes again? These questions, amongst others, seem to pervade in our imagination as it seems that political stability is far away. No matter who is the president, it seems that our politicians are unable to communicate. It doesn't seem to get any better as those people who've been laid off by COVID and COVID affected things find themselves languishing, hoping to find a future in a regenerated economy that may or may not have phased out their way of making a living. 
the questions that we face about family, about future, about friends, about the frailties of our body, how we make sense of the world seem to be up for discussion and for inquiry. And if we are not careful, we will find ourselves asking questions, but asking them without hope. Yes, hope, my sister and my brother, hope that seemingly intangible yet tangible reality that shapes the way we live and buoys us in times of adversity. It seems that in times of pandemic, our hope has gotten sick. It seems that our hope has fatigued and has languished as we find ourselves sitting in our homes, looking at the same four walls over and over again, looking at the same people within those walls day in and day out, wondering when are we going to be able to find a sense of normal. It is for those people who are or seemingly rambunctious in their space, seeking to find ways to, to grab energy and to harness it in ways that are productive. It is us who we find ourselves struggling that the words of this text speak to because we are asking God when, why, how, and for how long? When will you bring justice? How will you right these situations? When will you come through and see about us? So it leads us to the question that is in our text. My way is hidden from the Lord? And my right is disregarded by my God? This age that we live in, those who constitute this world that we live in, they're asking God this question even in their atheist nature. They are asking God, do you even care? So much so that I don't even believe in you because I don't believe that you can. Our age is yet seeking a sign, seek, seeking to find a way to make sense of the chaos that is our reality. We even, with our frustration and with our agitation, shake our bony fists at the sky, asking God for a sign. But what I appreciate about this text, what I appreciate about Isaiah or Deutero Isaiah or Second Isaiah for those biblical scholars, this, this writing with Isaiah's name, starting in chapter 40, brings about a new period of hope in the book of Isaiah. Yes, in chapter 40, there's a demarcation from what happened before and what will happen in the future. It seems that the questions that were haunting the people, it seemed that the history that was pressing down upon them, it seemed that the future that they were longing to grab, it seemed that they were in a place now where they were squeezed into questions. The future here, the past here, and those impinging upon them so that they must ask questions of the present. What shall we do? How shall we live? Maybe those questions, maybe that impingement between eternity past and eternity present and eternity future, maybe the impingement of past and future are now pushing this congregation to ask questions of itself. How shall we live? What shall we do in this space that we have been entrusted? This neighborhood who God has given us responsibility to cultivate and to help nourish. How do we live? Where is the fertile imagination that is bursting forth seeking to do something new in Inglewood? Yes, you feel the pinch. Just like those in Judah felt the pinch under Isaiah's words, they felt the pinch saying, where is God? But God in the text has questions for a questioning age. God in this text is not just going to allow you to ask questions without showing that we have a responsibility in the outcome. There's nothing wrong with inquiry toward the creator. Some of us grew up saying that we can't ask God questions. We don't, we have a theology that is a recipient theology and not a reciprocal theology in which we receive from God but we don't share with God. But this text has a dialogue because the people are asking a question, yet God is asking a question. To God asks two questions with refrain, with 
the poetic Hebrew refrain that's in the text, and they are relevant for our times as they were relevant for the times of this text. Have you not known? And have you not heard? Two questions overlapping but not the same. Have you not known? Have you not known that the God that you have forsaken in your idolatry is vaster, bigger, and more abundant than the idols that we fashion with our hands? The reading for today picks up at verse 21, but if you pan back a few verses, you begin to get a broader context for which this writer is writing. Because the text goes on to say a couple of verses back that these people have turned to gods of wood that won't rot. They've turned themselves over to idols with gold and with chains on them. They are fashioned gods like themselves. The gods that they are shaping, those, God, those idols that seem to provide quick remedy of the questions of their age. Those idols that they were able to imagine and craft and shape into such a way that they were able to externalize their internal idolatry. So that now they have exerted their energy to create a God-like situation that does not worship God. And that creation of idols has robbed them of the energy, the youth, and the vitality that marks true worship of Yahweh. So these people in this text are fatigued and tired, pinched by empire, and pinched by an empire to come. And God is saying that, have you not known that my ways are higher than your ways? Have you not heard about the things that I've done for you throughout the history of the Hebrew people? Have you, Judah, have fallen away and become so apostate? Have you become so forgetful? Have you lost your sense of sense and bearing that you are unable to know that the God that sits on the circles of the earth, the God that looks down at human beings are like grasshoppers, the God whose infancy is so broad and so grand that human beings are considered like grass. It is this God that is inviting us to forsake the idols of complacency, forsake the idols of I've never done it this way before, to forsake the idols of how we've done things, to imagine and to embrace the future that God has for us in these times. That pinch you feel is not indigestion, heartburn, and gas. That pinch that you feel is God asking you to live out the past, but to dream of a future and to make it happen in the present. Be it 440, 400, or 4,000, this community needs this church. Englewood needs holy faith to live out its name and to live out its mission. Yes, this place has been a refuge for those for many, many years, but the greatest work is yet ahead. As the world continues to spin and as times continue to change, God has given us an opportunity to do the work of ministry. But though the work of ministry that we must engage comes when we face the two questions that God asks in this text. Have you not known of what I've done for your ancestors? Have you not known what I've done in the life of this church? Have you not known how I've made ways for those in this community? Have you not known the ways in which I've sustained this country and this world? Have you not heard of the glad tidings and the promises that God has for you? Have you not heard of the promises that God has uttered in eternity past that God strains to make ever real in our present. It is this God who hears our questions and questions our questioning age. We serve a God that is not too intimidated that we can't ask questions and we cannot come boldly before the throne of grace. But my sister and my brother, 
God is asking us through the words of Isaiah to remember what we've heard and to remember what we've known about this God so that the ways in which we live now and in the future, at home or in this space, how we live will manifest from how we've come to know and how we've come to hear about our God. Holy faith, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause God's face to shine upon you. May the Lord be merciful unto you and may the Lord grant you peace as you do the work of ministry in Inglewood and in broader Los Angeles. Amen. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Juntos afirmemos nuestra fe en las palabras del credo de Niceno. Creemos en un solo Dios, Padre Todopoderoso, Creador de cielo y tierra, de todo lo visible y invisible. Creemos en un solo Señor, Jesucristo, Hijo único de Dios, nacido del Padre antes de todos los siglos, Dios de Dios, luz de luz, Dios verdadero de Dios verdadero, engendrado, no creado, de la misma naturaleza que el Padre, por quien todo fue hecho, que por nosotros y por nuestra salvación bajo del cielo, por obra, obra del Espíritu Santo se encarnó de María, la Virgen, y se hizo hombre. Por nuestra causa fue crucificado en tiempos de Poncio Pilato, padeció y fue sepultado. Resucitó al tercer día, según las Escrituras. Subió al cielo y está sentado a la derecha del Padre. De nuevo vendrá con gloria para juzgar a vivos y muertos, y su reino no tendrá fin. Creemos en el Espíritu Santo, Señor y Dador de vida, que procede del Padre y del Hijo, que con el Padre y el Hijo recibe ahora misma adoración y gloria y que habló por los profetas. Creemos en la Iglesia, que es una santa, católica y apostólica. Reconocemos un solo bautismo para el perdón de los pecados. Esperamos la resurrección de los muertos y la vida del mundo futuro. Amén. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. My sisters and brothers, in the peace of God, all the gifts we shall give and receive in these days are but small tokens of the gift that shines forth in God's word made flesh. From grateful hearts, let us intercede for all who find themselves longing for these deepest, truest gifts, saying, O oh Lord, let your light shine. A que la paz proclamada por los ángeles en el campo del pastor pueda realizarse en cada campo de guerra y en cada calle llena de violencia, en los rincones oscuros del mundo. Señor, haz que brille tu luz. That the child born to us might find in our hearts warm welcome by our openness to the needs of the homeless and the hungry into the dark corners of the world. O oh Lord, let your light shine. Que este tiempo de dar regalos podamos ser más atentos a los abandonados, los desesperados y los desconsolados en los rincones oscuros del mundo. Señor, haz que brille tu luz. That the rejoicing of this season might be a bond leading us to true communion of life and worship and into the dark corners of the world. O oh Lord, let your light shine. Que el gozo y el consuelo del, con del consejero admirable aliente a todos aquellos afectados por la enfermedad y otros padecimientos en los rincones oscuros del mundo. Señor, 
आज के बड़ी ये तुलूस that the blessed hope we celebrate these days might be the fulfillment of all who have gone before us in faith into the dark corners of the world o oh lord let your light shine and now i invite your own prayers adding them either silently or aloud we pray for those on our prayer list this week we pray for those who grieve We pray for those who are dying alone. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo santificado sea tu nombre Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas como también Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. He's never failed me yet. Oh, 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 oh. can't turn around. 
we've come this far by faith. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God's beloved. Happy birthday to you. Cumpleaños feliz. Te deseamos a ti. Que los cumplas en tu día, que los cumplas feliz. And now go forth into a world divided, yet know that God dwells even there, in all places, in this time. Y también sepan que no existe una división real, porque todo está en Dios y Dios está con todos. Somos uno en la unidad de Dios. Be aware of that sacred presence. Let it strengthen you. Let it transform you. Build shalom. Amor con abandono. Permanece en paz. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus He decidido seguir a Cristo I have decided to follow Jesus No way but Join me, so.